point of my speech and also um, eliminate filler words, obviously, and, and just reduce some of my nervous jitters that I tend to have in front of an audience. So, how many of you have clothes in your closet that you don't wear or that you might not have worn for maybe six to 12 months? Okay, everybody's got to have a piece of clothing in their closet that they don't wear. So, did you know that you could potentially be sitting on a gold mine? There's lots of money in your closet. You might not want to just simply give those pieces of clothing away. You might not want to just donate them because you worked hard and you bought them with your hard-earned paycheck. So what you can do is consign your clothes. And I'm going to tell you about a recent experience that I had consigning clothes. It was my first time, and I went to a place called Second Time Around in Okemos. And it was a great experience, and I think that if you have clothes in your closet and you don't wear them, that you should, you should look at this as an option for making a couple of bucks. <coughs> so, the first step for consigning clothes is to take a look at your closet, honestly, and maybe have a friend with you even, because it could help if you need to try some things on. And look at everything. Don't take it off the hanger just yet, because you're going to maybe need that hanger at the end of this process. So, you look at the item that you no longer wear anymore, and you lay it across your bed. You stick it in a pile, and you just leave it there for a little while. And then you um, keep going, and you look at the shoes in your closet, and the purses, and all your belts, and ties, and everything like that. Everything from formal wear to coats. Check every single closet that you have, even your kids' closets, or your husband's closets. Actually, I found everything that I was going to consign this time in my husband's closet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have anything that I could get rid of. I'm obviously pregnant. And I don't know really what's going to fit. Nothing old fits, nothing new fits. I'm not buying anything new. So anyway, everything that I took to the consignment store was my husband's. And he was happy about that because now he thinks he's going to get all the money. So anyway, my hard work, his money, anyway. So you look at everything that you have in your closet. And then you get to the point where you are at the next step, where you need to figure out what you need to do to prepare those clothes and if you really want to keep them. So this is where you take your, your piece of clothing that's on a hanger and you take a good look at it. Does it have any snags on it? Is it dirty anywhere? Should it be laundered? Has it been hanging in your closet for so long that you probably should wash it? Maybe your sweaters have those little bump marks on them from sitting on the hangers. So <laughs> if, if you know those things need to happen before you would even wear it, the consignment stores are going to look at that too. So they only want things that look just like you would find something in a department store. You want it to look nice. You want it to be ready to wear. So you're going to take a look at each of those items, really take a look and decide if you want to sell them or not, and then Clean them up, freshen them up, press men's shirts if you need to. I think I ironed probably 15 shirts one night. <laughs> but it's an essential step because they're going to turn you away if your clothes are not ready. So once you've gone through your closet and your shoes and your belts and check things for wear, they don't want things that are um, very worn out with obvious signs of wear, like on your buckles and things like that. Um, and shoes, they want them to maintain their shape. So no floppy shoes, no flip-flops, things like that. And then um, another tip is to think about things that are in season right now. So it's, we're in the middle of winter. They're not taking sandals, shorts, short sleeve shirts, or anything like that. So those are things to keep in mind as you're looking through your closet. Maybe you could create two piles. And then the final step is to actually pick a consignment store that you want to do business with. Now you should try to find one that maybe you've heard about or that you know has a good reputation where a lot of people go or it's in a um, highly visible area in town. Second time around happens to be a place that I've heard of many, many times, so that's why I decided to go there. But there's also other places along the way, so you might want to pick two consignment stores because what second time around might take, um, they might not take everything that you have, but you could try another shop and, and establish another relationship there. So when you get to your consignment store with everything that you own that you're getting ready to consign, hanging up on hangers and ready to go, you're going to walk into the building and they're going to ask you to put things up on a rack. Now there's going to be an associate that helps you with the, the next step and they're basically going to scrutinize everything that you bring in. And I felt a little bit um, embarrassed, honestly, because they were assessing my, my pressing skills and how clean my stuff was and it felt really awkward to have somebody look at my clothes and tell me if it was good enough to sell. But it was an actually a really good experience and they said that I did a nice job especially being my first time. Like they certainly sent me away with half of what I thought I was gonna sell, but it, it was still worthwhile to do that. And then once they've decided what they want from your 
list of items or everything that you brought in. They'll give you a sheet and they'll tell you exactly what they might be able to sell it for on the floor. Like a men's suit, for instance. A full men's suit with a jacket and a uh, pair of pants. They would try to sell that suit for $55 at second time around. Now, if you were to go retail and try to buy that same suit, it would be about $200 at least if you can get something like that on sale. Significant savings for people who are shopping at consignment stores. And then you, as the consigner, you get half of that. So it's kind of like a 50-50 deal. So you could really make a good chunk of money if you've got 10 suits in your closet that you no longer need. And so the bottom line with that is if you take the time to look in your closet, figure out what you need and what you don't, what you wear and what you can live without, and take the time to clean everything up and press it and do everything that needs to be done, you could make yourself quite a bit of cash. Um, the potential costs or the potential um, money that we would make on just this one load of stuff that I brought in with my husband's was about $200, which is pretty incredible when you think about the fact that he wasn't wearing it anyway. So, <laughs> good luck. Thank you, Lina. Mm -hmm. Talk about tight wad and saving <laughs> money, that's all about me. Yes. Please take a minute to write down what you like, what you think she could improve on, on the evaluations if you have one. It looks like you don't have one in the back, so. I'll pass my This just helps. He has, Lina will have something to take home with maybe a dozen evaluations. And everyone's different, their opinion. We try to give them one thing to work on or one thing, a couple things they did well. But it gives her an idea of what the club sees, how she can improve. 